Okay, next principle. This is known as Kirchhoff's laws. This principle is used to find out if the object that we are looking at is a star or is it a gas? Or is it a planet? Okay? So it allows us to know if the object we are looking at is a solid object, a planet, or a gas. The formal name of a gas is a nebula or a star. So law number one says solid objects, liquids, or dense gases give off continuous spectra. Okay? So continuous spectra is this one. You see? A hot solid, liquid, or dense gas. If it's a very hot solid, a liquid or a dense gas, and you take it, and you take its light through a prism, you're going to get a continuous spectra. That means you're going to have no absorption lines, no emission lines, just a continuous spectra. So if you're looking at an object in the sky and you notice a continuous spectra, then it's a solid object, a liquid or a dense gas, very, very dense gas. Law number two, thin clouds of gases, thin cloud of gas in the sky, also known as a nebula. If you look at the light through that, you know this bright line emission spectra. Gases or nebula give off emission spectra or bright line spectra. So the lines that I was just showing you back in here when we were studying this topic, I showed you this one. What kind of spectra did I show you? Notice, the background is dark, the lines are bright. What kind of spectra? Bright line spectra. Bright line, the lines are bright, okay? So the one that I'm showing you here is this one. You see here, this one is the same as this one. You see? So if you're looking at this, if you're looking at an object in the sky and you see this, what can you conclude about the object? It's a gas. It's not a star. You see? If you're seeing this. Now, law number three. Stars give off, opposite of that, opposite of emission is absorption. Opposite of bright is what? Dark. So look at here. You see here? Let's see if you can tell what's the difference between this and this. Dark line absorption spectrum. Here, the background is dark. The lines are colored. Here, the background is what? Colored. But certain colors are absorbed. See? Absorbed. 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 You see that? They're missing. So this is kind of thing is called dark line spectra. What objects have this kind of spectra? Only stars. So let's look at this couple other stuff here. <coughs> Another way to see it again, continuous. Emission, this is the emission spectra of hydrogen, the bomber line, you know, 656, 486, 434, 410. This is the absorption spectra of hydrogen, okay? Background colored, the red line missing, green line missing, the two violets missing. You see that? See a movie again. So if it's a hot object, solid object, continuous spectra. If the hot solid object and in front of it there is a gas, absorption. 
if the gas itself is the one emitting the energy, it's emission. Okay? So you see, if the hot object is emitting it and it's going through a gas, it's absorption. If the gas itself is emitting it, it's emission. Again, I always like to explain what, why, what's happening here. What's causing uh, this? So let's look at this one more time. Hot solid going through absorption, the gas emitting emission. Why? Why do stars give you, sorry, uh, let's go back. Why do stars give you these kind of spectra? The stars, this is a typical structure of a star. It's got a very hot, very dense core. I'll draw this, I'll write this bigger. Very hot, very dense core. And then there is the the outer layers of the star. This is a typical picture of a star. So why do stars give this kind of spectra? Nothing else does give you this kind of spectra. Because the stars have a very solid-like core. It's dense, very, very dense gas. According to law number one, when that gas radiates, what kind of spectra does it radiate? Solid object, dense gases, radiate continuous spectrum, right? They're radiating continuous in all the regions. The energy is being radiated in all regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. But then the, the atmosphere of the star has certain elements in it. Hydrogen, carbon, iron, so on. When those elements are excited by the energy that's coming towards them, the uh, electrons are excited, what happens? They jump from a lower level to a higher orbit, lower to a higher, lower to a higher. They absorb the energy that's coming from the core. You see, the energy is coming, and then these elements here, hydrogen and helium, the electrons are going around, and all of a sudden this energy comes, it bumps them up to a higher level. It absorbs it, you see? That's why you get, by the time the energy comes toward us, the energy comes toward us by seeing that absorbed energy. So that's why stars give absorption spectra. <coughs> yeah, yeah, the Earth and the Moon, if you were from outer space and you were viewing the Earth and the Moon, it would give you a continuous spectra. And the, sun would be like the, the Sun would, only the Sun is the third one. Exactly. So that's how we can pinpoint, we can tell if something in that we're looking at is a star, is it a gas, is it a planet? You see, the first person to know this and study this is a German physicist known, known as Fraunhofer. Um, uh, let's see here, if I show you. This shows you the spectrum of a, uh, the top one shows you the spectrum of a comet. <coughs> the bottom one shows you the spectrum of the sun. You see sun, comet, okay? How are they different? The sun is a continuous spectra, but certain lines are what? Absorbed, you see? So since the sun's atmosphere has calcium in it, it absorbs it. Hydrogen, 410, 434, 486, 656. Absorbed, absorbed. And then 656 is way over there. Magnesium absorbs it, sodium absorbed. How about comet? Is it absorption or emission spectra? Comet, the atmosphere of a comet, or also known as its coma, emission, it has OH, NH. CO2, emission, 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 you see? So is comet acting more like a gas or is it acting more like a star? Gas. 
What is a comet anyway? Comet is a little rocky object, rocky core. And does the core of the comet radiate energy? No, it's frozen piece of rock in the outer solar system. It has different gases surrounding it. As the comet starts making its way towards the sun, it's heated, 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 heated. The gas of the, the gas surrounding the comet starts glowing. You see? So the core is not radiating anything. The gas starts glowing, glowing, glowing as it gets heated and then starts forming a tail. So when we study the spectrum of a comet, we're studying that gas that has formed around the comet. You see? So the spectrum of a comet is emission. Okay? Sun, very different. 